Hello and welcome back to Homestand NFL. I'm your host, Sarah Stead, with Justin Pooney. This is our first show of 2023. We haven't uh, been back for a couple weeks now, and it's really exciting to be here. Obviously, Jelani Gurdjieff is not here. He's back in New York with his family still. But that doesn't mean we're not going to have a good show today. Um, unfortunately, the year is starting off a little bit sad. Uh, we have some news of Damar Hamlin, of course, on Monday night collapsing on the field during the game and the game being suspended. Um, he got hit by Bengals wide receiver T. Higgins. And it was really a horrifying scene, honestly, Justin, as the ambulance drove onto the field. Everybody was, of course, panicked, didn't know what was going on. The mm. fans didn't know what was going on at the time. And just seeing the faces of all the players kind of gathering around, you know, in support of him and and waiting to see what was going to happen. Um, the game, of course, got postponed. They didn't say when they're going to mm -hmm. continue or play that game again. But as of now, we're just kind of waiting on updates. Um, so, Justin, what was your reaction during that? Yeah, well, just to give an uh, update right now, he's still in ICU and he's still, according to the, his family, he's still fighting and stuff like that. They're still running tests and all that. So, again, you know, from us at home, some of our thoughts and prayers are all with the Hamlin family mm -hmm. and, of course, everybody of course. involved in the situation. Um, it was, I've been a football fan, I think we talked about a couple of weeks ago, that I've been a football fan since like 2005, right? Um, and I have, and I've seen, you know, as a fan, you've seen guys, you know, get hit and that, you know, lay motionless. You know, we've seen, you know, other injuries, torn ACLs, torn Achilles. We've seen um, a lot of horrific stuff throughout the years of being, a, at least I have being an NFL fan. Um, but, you know, you always saw guys, you know, give their, you know, their thumbs up when they, you know, they get all stretched off or carted off. And when I heard the words CPR, uh, and you could tell on the broadcast by Joe Buck saying saying it, uh, I was like, oh. And I had like you know a group of friends um, with me watching the game because it was a big game. And uh, once we heard CPR, more football fans were like, oh, that's not normal, right? Like that's that's something seriously wrong here. Mm -hmm. um, and then you saw the emotion of not just the Bills players but the Bengals players too, um, and just the hush in the stadium, and it was very eerie. Um, and those, you know, those minutes that went by that felt like an eternity, um, not only for football fans, but I'm sure for DeMar Hamlin's family and all of that, um, it was a scary moment. And I think every, I think at that moment, the thought of sports and playoff races and football and this and that, it kind of went out the window, right? I, I'm sure you could think say mm -hmm. the same thing, that nobody cared about the game anymore. It was bigger than that because a young man who was living his dream Right, and I think Ryan Clark said it perfectly um, while ESPN, which did an amazing job covering it afterwards, um, in the tough circumstances. Demar Hamlin woke up that morning, wanting to be in Cincinnati, wanting to be in the biggest game of his career, um, wanting to do something that he loves to do. He's worked so hard to do, um, and it was just so heartbreaking. And it's again, you know, with this this. Every, even myself, all football fans and all people that love football have been checking their phones all the time just to see updates and stuff like that. Um, so it's definitely been, you know, a very football's on the back burner right now. We're, everybody's worried about a young man, a young athlete, making sure that he survives and he fights and he gets through this. Um, mm -hmm. And I think uh, that's what's most important. Nobody cares about football or um, the game or, you know, playoffs or anything like that. Right now, it's all about. Um, thoughts and prayers with this young man. Of course, yes. And one thing that was nice to see, however, was the support that he got, you know, from the not just the NFL fans and, and community there, but just worldwide with everyone. Like, he had a uh, GoFundMe. It was a toy drive for a foundation called Chasing M's. And it went from, like, I think it was $2,500 that he had raised just prior that day to like six million dollars within a couple not even that long that amount of time i remember even the day of it took like maybe a day or two to even reach a million i think it was that night it reached mm -hmm. a million so it yeah. really grew so quickly and we saw support of so many people through that and also like athletes were donating and whatnot mm -hmm. so that was a really great thing to see and his family was very um you know felt very Receptive. supported by yeah, that exactly. as well which is nice and i think Again, his family actually spoke. There was a statement that came out this morning, mm -hmm. but it's, I think it was his uncle or one of his family members said, the people that stop blaming T. Higgins, because a lot of people are blaming T. Higgins. Yeah. Um, and again, when you look at it, it was football. A lot of football play, ex footballers are coming and saying, football is a sport where you have a 100% chance to get injured. Um, and 
it was an unfortunate event and it was quite frankly nobody could ever prepare for this mm -mm. right i i you know you heard a lot of people talking about how like oh the game should have been canceled right away and this or that should have been done differently well of course things could have been done differently but this this is the isolated moment that's never happened before right what we can be thankful for is that there's medical professionals on the sidelines that it didn't take minutes for him to get um, attention. It took a matter of seconds, mm -hmm. right? And I think that right there um, was something that should be condemned. That they have those, the NFL has those things. They have prepared to, they have medical professionals prepared to handle these situations. And um, I think it's only, again, Hopefully this never, ever, ever happens again. Mm -hmm. But leagues and sports, uh, sports leagues and just in general, you know, mat big gatherings, there'll be things put in place um, to make sure people can get the attention they need if they do deserve. Mm -hmm. If they need yeah. it, sorry. Yeah, no, and as of now, I mean, it, like we said, it's just kind of a waiting game to see any medical updates, mm -hmm. any updates from the family, um, and just hope and pray that um, him and his family are doing okay. And of course, like you said, T. Higgins as well. I mean, prayers to him as well because it, like you said, it's just part of the game. He he did he just played the game mm -hmm. like he would any other day, and and it and it was an incident that was unfortunate that exactly. he had he had obviously no intention of causing. And so. I think I think also that like the Bills canceled their media availability today. I, you saw like the video of Stefan Diggs walking into the hospital yes. post game. Um, just been reading online that it's been very d difficult for Bills players. Mm -hmm. You could you could see after it happened that just guys just looked dejected, mm -hmm. and I don't think I don't think the NFL was ever going to make them go back out there and play. Mm -hmm. um, it was they're humans first, exactly. So that's what's we important. always I think we always forget that athletes. We think of athletes as just these. We de basically dehumanize them, um, but at the end of the day, they're just like you and me. They they cry, they bleed, they they go through things, right? And we have to remember that they are people as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think respecting the privacy of the family, respecting the privacy of the bills and people that were involved, that just you know what, like let them deal with it as a team, as an organization, as the Marhamman, as a family. Um, and then when the time is right, then information will come out and then we'll get the answers but i think at this point in time it's all about just making sure that this young man mm -hmm. gets through this obstacle i think that's the biggest thing yep and we're all hoping for yeah. the best for him and that's all for our show today and we'll see you next time on homestand nfl